Very powerful mid jungle combination, especially in those early game skirmishes. Having those extra shields and stuff for the Zinza to go aggressive can be huge. And now, WE, do you just lock in your top side here, or do you look for an AD carry that can maybe go toe to toe? Would be surprised to see the Jinx, but the, the Ziggs is a little bit of a, a WE specialty right now. They are some a team that is very happy to go for that pick. For now, they're just going to go with the Tristana. Now, again, I, I mean, there's always the world where that Karma's a, a bot laner, and of course the Tristana's mid, but we'll wait and see where all the champions end up falling once everything's picked and, and chosen. I feel like this Tristana is most likely going to go towards the bot side of the map. Now, the bigger question mark for me here is going to be the Twisted Fate. Do you put it mid or top? Because you have red side, and this is a very good thing for Weibo Gaming right here, because they get to dictate where that Twisted Fate goes. However, we have seen a few counter picks uh, towards Twisted Fate, with the more prominent and recent being Yasuo towards the top side of the map. And we do know that Wayward does like a spicy matchup. He will take the fight to you. He likes the 1v1s. We said he's the top one with the most solo kills in the entire league currently. So we'll see how he chooses to respond to a potential twist of fate top for the disease. It is he. He does like his Brutus and his tanks more. Not necessarily the very squishy carry stops out of the map. So I do have my, uh, my questions here on whether that twist of fate is actually going top lane or if it was locked in for Zahu. Yeah, we'll wait to see. So far, the Jax is the only real ban we've seen so far. So uh, everyone is uh, kind of just waiting to see where everything kind of, you know, where are all these mo picks going to go? Where is everyone going to be moving these things around? You still potentially could pick up the Ash here for Weibo. Go with an Ash virus ball. And we talked about how crazy powerful that can be. Still waiting to see if it is going to be the bans coming out here for WE, but... We both seem to be much happier with the way things are going. You've got plenty of pick potential, getting that Destiny Gate across the map, just, you know, kind of constantly looking for single target damage and CC with the virus and, of course, the, the Twist of Fate. I'll wait to see where they want to try and bring the rest of this comp together. But for now, WE, they are just going to be Ooh. respected the fact that the Sigs could be going bot lane. Because, uh, again, like I said, the Karma could be swapped out. Could be a Karma top as well, to be perfectly honest. Against the Twist of Fate, wouldn't do, da wouldn't do too badly. Absolutely, and I want to correct myself here because it is indeed played the Twisted Fate for the first time. Uh, it was in the NIP series that I just mentioned earlier, so it is a double flex still right here. I love the fact that WE are taking away a lot of the power from the Lee Sin, which is pairing him up with things like Nico, Ari, LeBlanc. He's very good getting set up for by these champions making the plays. However, we still do not know where that Twisted Fate goes, and I think it's going to be a very telltale on what they choose to put towards the top side of the map. Now, Wayward, what do you have as a reply to a potential Twisted Fate in the top lane? Do you pull out the Yasuo? Do you pull out the Fiora? Potentially even. Do you go for something a bit crazier? The Jin, you thought. Wow, it's like you, stay never left. It's like, it's like stay, stay never, never left. left. Now we'll see where that karma is <laughs> going to end up going right now. They could go for the Camille for Wayward. It would be a weird one for me. I think the karma top makes a lot of sense just because you know that the, uh, the, the twist of fate will be, you can kind of honestly move the Tristana and the Karma depending on what lane you want it to go in right now. Weibo, you know you cannot pick the Azir, so you're happy enough to let that one go. They're kind of trying to see if they can get maybe a mid laner going here for Xiaohu if he does not want to take that twist of fate. Has been opting in for the Orianna as of late, that kind of more magey build. Let's see if he ends up locking in anything too crazy. Looks like they're just going to go kind of standard scaling, get the poke in, use that virus corky combination alongside the Twisted Fate to get picks off before a fight can even begin. Wow, Yordle Power has to be replied with Yordle Power. Corky in the mid lane. I haven't seen this in a very long time, but it does scale pretty well into the late game. It does give you a lot of push, push potential uh, in the mid lane, especially when you have access to these rockets with the corky. So you can get a lot of priority. The packages, of course, rumble olds all over the floor, especially when it comes to these neutral objectives. And I, I have to say right here, I love what WE have brought uh, have brought to us. They have a very strong frontline with Zinzal being backed up by a Karma into a bar that's going to be roaming around the map, making it very difficult uh, to track down. And Jin sort of facilitating these fights later on with the with the curtain call and the ultimates. The one thing that I'm very worried about, however, is that Tristana top lane. Because to me, 
This is uh, a very susceptible to gank sort of pick. Yes, you can buffer the gold card with the jump to jump further away, but once the gold card does land, the listen can very easily just hit a Q on you and follow up. So we'll see if Wayward can stand tall against the pressure again. The guy has the most solo kills for a reason. He's incredible in figuring out his matchups and min-maxing the heck out of them. So we'll see how he pivots his Tristana into ZDZ Swiss Trade. Yeah, Tristana top is definitely a, uh, a flex that I wasn't exactly sure we would see today, but nevertheless, it is going to be going into the Twisted Fate. And again, because the Twisted Fate top has become so, you know, kind of prevalent in the pick bands now of so many of these teams, it has become just more of a, you have to find counters, you have to find ways of dealing with it. And we'll see if this is the way they can work with it. Ooh, look at the, look at the early game bod right here. Pops of chocolate in the brush. Very, very nice right there. A little bit of sustain for Wayward later on, being able to take these trades with the Twisted Fed and Yahoo also towards the top side of the map, trying to cover for ZDZ for a potential, you know, the early game from the Bard slapping in the face together with Tristana is kind of scary. So making sure that ZDZ does not fall victim to that. However, as it is, he has gone towards the barrier, playing a little bit more defensive right here. Very defensive. Tristana. Yeah, not going yeah. with the ghost usually is the, the way we go in the top side, but we'll see. TP I wonder, for Wayward. Though, how the teamfights will look like now that ZDZ does not have... Obviously, you have Fleet, but you don't have the ghost. So I wonder how you're going to pivot around Xin Zhao, getting towards the top side of the map. We're going to have to wait and see. First gold guard's going to get pulled out. And instantly, they're both trading onto each other. Yeah, and this is just kind of how the trades will go, pretty much. That's why we saw the, the little hot cocoa being popped out. So he gets a nice little bit of a heal back at the level one. Just a, a nice way of Bard kind of affecting the lanes without having to uh, leave, leave his own bot lane, basically. So we'll see now what Iwandi can do with this pick. Of course, something that we've seen kind of historically just be such an incredibly powerful pick in the right hands that, uh, you know, obviously I think of Caria in World Championships 2023. We have a level two now, CDZ. Gonna have to walk away from this one. Actually gets a fair amount of damage back. And uh, we can see the last time that this Tristana top was played was 1,084 days ago. It was actually Xiaohu in 2021, back when he was a top laner. He picked it up and was able to utilize that pick. And now we can see ZDZ with the barrier gets a fair amount of damage back down onto Wayward. And this is why the barrier was chosen. It's going to be oh, a flash gold flash. card. There it is. Flash for flash. Oh. ZDZ knew he had the killer moves, but does not get in range. He wasn't quite in range right there, but now both these top players are very susceptible to getting ganked. Right here, we know that ZDZ does not have teleport as well, so Wayward is going to be teeping straight on the top, and you see the pings are instantly dropping from the side of WE, pinging onto the Twisted Fate. Xiaohao is going to wrap around the top side as well. He knows that this Xin Zhao is going to be running towards the top side of the map. Level 2, level 3 now for Wayward has... Access to oh. all of his spells and he Heng is around, but they don't know that Zaho is now in this bush. They do. Now they do. They're jumping on the ZDZ to try to slow him down, get the damage in, and they will. The knockup comes out of the Xiao Hao. Another jump backwards. Xiao Hao does not use his flash. He does not need it for the moment, but WE fantastically set up there for the moment just to keep that top side burning in their favor. And we mentioned it straight from the get-go. WE are going to play towards Wayward. Wayward is one of their strongest pawns in this chess uh, in this chess game that they're playing right now. So making sure that you get him fed, you get him ahead onto this Tristana, you grab a few items is going to be of pivotal importance to win this game. Hang does not disappoint. Sprint straight towards the top side of the map. Now, something that we don't necessarily talk a lot about, and I did say that I'm an avid Jin hater. Uh, the main reason is because there are so many like bruisers and frontliners uh, in League of Legends right now that it becomes almost impossible to play the likes of Jin. But right here, if you look at Weibo's side, the most tanky member is most likely going to be the Lee Sin. And that's not necessarily like a very heavy duty tank champion that you do tend to see. So I feel like Jin here does serve a purpose of dealing a bunch of damage because they're basically squishes on the side of Weibo, as well as a lot of utility in setting up the fights with Curtain Call. 
Got a lot of range with that as well. You can see kind of outside of the the, the Qs, or excuse me, the ults and the the uh, yeah the Qs from Varus. They have a lot of range on the side of uh, Weibo. They're going to be very much kind of in your face looking for fights. Xiaohu does get stunned up here by Fofo. And they seem to be just trading back damage in and out pretty much as frequently as they possibly can. You can see double stacking here for Xiao, who he's got a tier and a call, just knowing this mid lane is not really a lane. Yeah, he's not he's, he's scaling. He knows there's no real damage threat for them <laughs> right now. <laughs> scaling is the word. It's why I hate Corky. I hate Corky in his ear. It's like, oh we're fine. We can just we can just sit here and scale. It's just so annoying. <laughs> no, don't worry, guys. Hashtag we scale. We might drop a couple of kills in the early game. We'll come back. Now hang, of course, sprinting straight towards his winning side again you've got i1d you have fofo tipping straight back into that mid lane the target of course is going to be the void grab shao how has actually sneaked in while the skirmish is going on in the mid lane to try and sneak in potentially one of those void grabs gonna smite it but hang is waiting right behind the pit yeah he is shao how gonna try flash over the wall will he be followed he can't be followed, as the magical journey was just used. I don't know if that's the place you um, want to be recalling right now. As we can see, Hang just kind of walking around there, making sure that they only get the one of the grubs. But now you've lost kind of all pressure towards this top side. Twist of Fate, without his flash, is still susceptible to this gank. But have I Wandi and Hang? And remember, you talked about it earlier today, how difficult it is to gank top lane on the red side because of the way the terrain has moved. Now with a magical journey, you can just pick and choose wherever you want to go for a fight. Doesn't matter how terrain is uh, set up against you. So for now, it is just kind of a happy place for Wayward to keep pushing in, keep farming up, keep trying to just keep ZDZ behind in this lane. Fofo though, bot side. Oh. Should be fine. All right, so usually the combo is uh, W into Q. This time we tried the the Karma, uh, the the Mantra uh, Q for Fofo, but now he has to walk through his lane. He doesn't have any escort right here. He knows he's walking into Cork. He listens on the side too. Yeah, he has to flash over the wall. Fofo recognizing if he gets hit by that Q, he is almost certainly dead. Wants to keep his life for the moment. And as much as Prince is having a fine time just farming up in this bot side, he is falling behind just because of the roams. Light is now level six. That chain of corruption could be coming out. There is a cleanse available though for Prince. So should he get caught out, they should be able to kind of get him out of it. But level six is now being hit across the board. This is when the game starts to get a little bit more testy. As you can see, there's the cleanse coming out. They get a little bit of HP back as well. Chris just get hit by the deadly flourish and we'll take another auto attack or so. But for now, despite that first uh, blood going over to WE, they haven't been able to get into any major gold leads. They haven't been able to get any major advantages. And all flashes and summoners should be back up in the next few minutes. Yeah, I was about to say that the flash is back up on ZDZ. So the fact that W have not yet capitalized on a flashless TF is a big W from ZDZ right there. They do catch Varus. One, they two, three, indeed. four. It's not quite the fourth shot close enough. And Light's going to get to walk out. But this is going to be Dragon uh, for WE. Very important. Yes, nice early stacking there. Xiaohao might look for a move on Daiwandi, but I think Daiwandi has recognized now that he's uh, not really in a position to chase that one down. Nice move up here by WE to get themselves a Dragon. They get boss side priority. And they get themselves the Dragon, the first Dragon of the game. So, this game is taking a little bit of a while to kind of warm up a little bit. Yes, we got the early skirmishing coming in from uh, top side, but for the moment, everyone's happy to go for it. So where do you want to see both these teams look for that advantages? Now that ultimates are available, people are starting to pick up, you know, first items, half items. Where do you want to see them make advantages happen for themselves? I feel like it has to be top side. I feel like Wayward is the one you want to get ahead. You can have your Tristana on a side lane later on. You can melt down uh, neutral objectives, getting that Tristana into the fight. So making sure that that Twisted Fate does not possess too much, uh, does not pose too much of a threat uh, on a side lane could definitely be it. However, you do have to go through his flash yet again. And currently there are plenty of wards. If you look towards the top side of the map, there's a control ward in that pixel brush. Then there's another one further down in the entry towards the blue buff. So they're trying to keep ZDZ as safe as possible. You see that I want is going to make his way towards the top side just to try and clear some vision from ZDZ. But ZDZ has been crashing wave after wave after wave underneath the tower completely unpunished. So I'd like to see Heng make another, uh, another, another appointment towards oh, the top Prince. side of the map to try and get way word ahead. He does have flash. We'll have to use it, so we'll take that trade any day of the week there as uh, Weibo Gaming's bot lane.
you will know that you are able to kind of come back into this one here. And this is the thing, when the Bard's roaming around the map, yes, he's helping the lanes, he's keeping the Tristana nice and safe, he's making sure that everyone's coming back into this very nicely, but at the end of it all, he's still moving away from bot side. The Jin is only so safe. He's doing a fair bit of damage onto Light there, brings him down to just below half, as now ZDZ might be getting caught out, so get the gold card down. And this is where the game wow. starts to get a little bit harder for the uh, the Weibo top laners. EDZ was, you know, in the ascendancy in terms of the early game, but he had to rush the uh, Berserker Greaves, or excuse me, not the Berserker Greaves, the... Uh... Steel Caps. Yeah, the Steel Caps. And uh, that's going to be a little bit of his damage now mitigated. I actually feel like he's mitigating a lot of the damage coming in from Wayward. Like the, the initial trade right there actually benefited ZDZ. But not knowing where Heng is, he's actually going to back off. Cork is going to TP towards the tops of the map just to catch the wave. And I'm assuming that TF is going to be heading uh, towards that mid, trying to catch the wave that Fofo is right now pushing. But what's happening to bot side? Ooh, that was we a have replay. A flash right there. Yeah, that's why I want lost this flash. Iwandi. Little bit overextended. All Light had to do was press his R. But again, we talked about Weibo Gaming and how Light and Crisp are literally the ones that get them ahead in the early game. And right now that virus is sitting 20, 20 CS up onto the Jin, an entire level up. And it's usually around the 10 minute mark that you'll see them move their virus and Rakan around. Currently, of course, Light is in the mid lane to try and get some fights around these neutral objectives. However, W were first onto this one, but very crucially, Xiao Hao will burn his flash for this, but he denies the Void Grubs buff. He does deny the Void Grubs, but I don't know if that's really that worth it there. You won't have your flash now available for this next Dragon, potentially, in minute 40's time. Hang is taking a huge amount of punishment right now. He might be forced to flash away. Nope, just uses his Crescent card and just disengages. That will be back up for the Dragon fight. But yeah, interesting enough to see what they're going for. But now with all that pressure you've had to put in towards that mid lane and bot side, or bot side of the top side river, you are going to lose three plates straight off at a huge wave as well, just crashing in here for Wayward means that he's he's honestly in a great spot, really. He just went towards that Kraken Slayer, already finished up that item. We are starting to see things stack up here for both these sides, and we're waiting for Boiling Point. It's only been the one kill so far. We've had a pretty... Oh, he's we'll see, it's a bit of a change of pace right now for us uh, on the casting desk. We've had BLG and Top Esports literally speedrunning their two opponents as quick as they possibly could, and now we're taking two teams <laughs> that are so genuinely close in the standings that they are going to take their time. They are not going to want to make mistakes in this game because the momentum could shift so quickly against them. Absolutely, and they're very evenly stacked as well. We, they're two teams that are very close in the standings, and they know that a loss right here could be completely detrimental for the run towards a playoff. So taking it slow is the name of the game, of course, when you have a Corky and you know you're scaling a lot into the late game. Taking it slow is the name of the game. On the other hand, Wayward has been cheaping away on this top lane tower. He has the Kraken Slayer first. He's actually the first uh, champion to complete an item, the first person to complete an item onto the Rift. Now, of course, another two have a Mana Moon uh, that's going to complete into a more mana, and of course, Hundred Sky for Hang onto this Zinza. But you see how Hang plays towards the top side relentlessly. He will keep sitting around Wayward. Taking this tower is more important to them than starting to stack the dragons. You do have the first one, so you're not worried about it too much. Taking a whole tower pre-minute 14 is going to be huge in terms of gold injection onto this Rissana 575 gold. This is a 4v4 around the Dragon Pit, because neither top laner has access to a global if they want to try and fight it. Chris will walk himself away from that fight for the moment, has access to his ultimate. The quickness could have been used there if he needed it, at the very least. So one Dragon apiece, first tower goes in favor of WE. The gold is only about 300 or so in their favor. And we'll see their Prince just happily pushing in that tower, making sure he can get himself a reset and we go back into a another lull stay. We will have Rift Herald up in a couple of seconds and people are starting to ping on it and first add-ons are being finished off. So Static Shiv on the Jin. Interesting enough, shows you how powerful the buffs were to that item on 14.4. Just such an incredible presence now on pretty much every AD carry. And it also gives you so much wave clear, which Jin has quite a bit of it. He does have his W right there. He has the flowers as well. He does have a 
quite a bit of wave clear. His Q, like his entire kit is pretty much wave clear. So having that extra static shift uh, to be able to push down the wave is huge, especially since he's playing cleanup duty right now. He was sitting bot lane, literally just pressuring waves that were crashing onto his tower. And as you can see right here, WE have put Fofo down the bot lane. His TP just came up. If there was a fight to break up towards the top side of the map for Rift Herald, he would be able to TP back into it. Then Weibo Gaming are going to reply with Jahu, who also has his TP available. However, I want to mention that Weibo have cleared the entire vision on the top quadrant of the jungle that there was set up for Wayward. So now I feel like WE need to use I Want and Hang to establish a little bit more control on the top side vision if they want Wayward to be such a nuisance towards the top side of the map and constant split push. This is the thing now. We're getting 50 minutes into the game. Our ult does not hit. Light looking to try and burn down Iwandi who flashes away. Nicely done there oh. with the Zin Zhao just to try and make sure everyone has to back off. He does still have the Crescent Guard, will use it, but still gets stunned up. The Q will land and he will go down. Can they get the damage back onto the Lee Sin? Yes, they can. Now Prince opens up with the Curtain Call and tries to slow them down. Three, four, will land, but nobody will go down afterwards. It's a one-for-one -one trade after the mid-turn late lane turret goes down. They do get the one kill, they do get the one tower as well. You see that ZDZ wasn't able to push quite as hard the top side of the map, so now Wayward is on his on his way top side. So I would say this is worth it. However, there were a few instances of very unfortunate events that happened back to back. A lot of abilities missed, a lot of uh, drifts went the wrong way. People died, not the cleanest for WE, but they do get what they came for, which was that mid lane tier one. They're gonna disperse back into their lanes and pressure respectively. Now you'll see the Bard ult misses, the Q misses, the W from Jin misses, literally everything that was thrown onto Light, Light actually sidestep. That was huge for him right there, making sure that he uh, stays alive. After everything was thrown at him, the two junglers are gonna pay the price with their lives but everyone else gets out now for weibo it becomes a little bit difficult right because every single time that you've got members that are quite immobile like the virus being in the mid lane having to pressure without your mid lane tier 2 tower it becomes a little bit difficult and you need to make sure that your control that your vision around that mid lane area is impeccable just so that light can pressure out these waves and you can play towards control into the river now shao hao does still have flash will get hit by the deadly flourish as he Safeguards his way to safety. We starting to try to pick up the pace a little bit. We're noticing there with the mid lane play, they were moving around the map a little bit faster. It was a one for one trade, but like you said, the tower went in favor of WE. Now Crisp on a flank. They have not spotted him out just yet. It's Prince who's very much in the kind of firing eyes right there. Flash kick there, but it's onto the Crescent Guard of Zin Zhao. He's taking a fierce amount of damage. There's Ooh. gonna be the tempered fate. This should only delay his fate for a couple more seconds. That's a kill given over to the side of Weibo, but tower in bot lane was taken. And this is the thing with the Chistana. We've seen it so many times where you left it, leave them alone for so long. They just take towers so quickly. I feel Shabu. like Weibo have to utilize the leasing, however, that they have right now. So the second they see Wayward bot lane and Fofo top lane, they just pull the trigger to try and get the kill. Right now, they're going to get a lot of control through the top side, potentially even a tower. They sit on a bunch of their wards, and now they're going to get to reset, go back and grab a few more control wards and head towards the dragon. They already have one in 25 seconds. A second one is going to spawn. And if I'm not wrong, we should have Corky package for this one too. So it's definitely a fight that they're going to be willing to take. Yeah, there he goes. He's he's pretty speedy. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's a package. <laughs> he's pretty sure that's a package. Sprinting him down towards the bottom. We didn't get the noise, uh, unfortunately, for it. But yeah, the game still very close. Uh... Not even. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. I'm glad to have you on, on my, my team here, just to, just to keep me up with it. You know. <laughs> I'm not sure how has access to that, but how long does he is he able to keep it? Because, I mean, the Huevo weren't really in a position to start this Dragon off straight away. WE can just wait, to be perfectly honest. They don't have to go for anything too exceptional for the moment. The poke will be significant coming out from this Corky with uh, an item and a half finish, but it's difficult to know. That's a two item for Stana at this stage of the game. So, yeah, Ooh. I think he just gave this one up. He didn't have time for the package to be used. Yeah, I feel like this also hurts your chances a lot because you have ZDZ on the top side of the map. There is no teleport. There is no destiny. There is no way getting into this fight. So I feel like trying to get TF to become a nuisance as much as possible in the 
top lane is more of a priority right now to Weibo Gaming. However, you do waste a pretty good package right there. The engage for both of these teams is very, very situational. On one side from WE, you have a bunch of poke, you have Deadly Flourish with the Jin, you've got some roots landing uh, from the Karma, you have to walk very close to the sun, of course, uh, to get this done with the Karma. And of course, you have Bard Ultimate, which is quite easy to dodge in a lot of instances, so it's very, a very flashable ability. And on the other hand, you have Weibo Gaming with the Rakan going in, but then there isn't much follow-up, because Corky doesn't necessarily want to be diving in with you unless there is a package so there was quite maybe a lost opportunity to try and shut down members of we but zdz was not quite in a form to join the fight and they thought it was more useful for them to try and get some more items onto the twister day first before they pull him in and crisp thinking about going pushing for some vision and uh and lose his little shield there the baron is now on the rift two to two in kills two dragons to one in favor of we oh zdz puts himself right in the middle of everybody right here and i think he's gonna regret that because he is dead now shall in a compromised position underneath the tower and fofo picks up that kill we just mentioned the baron but you've lost your top laner and your jungler this could be the ghost sign but i mean look at tristana the tristana right now is just free hitting on the bot side they're going to engage here onto the top lane just to make sure they can kill off this Corky now who could be going down before the fight even really begins a magical journey to set them right in front of him Chris is gonna try and get over the wall no he can't that's four kills from nothing WE will get the Baron and what was an incredibly close game is gonna turn into about a 4,000 gold lead incredible at punishing over forced skirmishes that's what is down in my document for WE, and they did just that. ZDZ popped out of nowhere in their face. They absolutely punished that. And when you were saying that Tristana started hammering bot lane, she was not, because you know what was called in the comms? Baron, 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 Baron. They knew that they had won this skirmish, and by having Tristana top side of the map, they can guarantee themselves the Baron. ZDZ playing a little bit too over-aggressive right there. They're playing a little split. Zhao Hao is looking for Fofo. He gets pulled underneath the tower with the blast cone a, a little bit of a blunder right there from Weibo Gaming and W is so quick into capitalizing of course Wayward oh, leaving the no. tower in the bolts to go for the Baron Chris has been caught right here the W is not gonna <laughs> land I was going to say, they, if they landed one bit of CC, he's definitely dead. Sadly, they could not time the stasis of the he's Tempest He's very slippery. Fate. Yeah, I will say, it's mad to me how many pro players, uh, pro players even, uh, miss that timing. Uh, it is one of those weird timings that uh, it is 2.5 seconds. It is always 2.5 seconds. Um, it has never changed from that, but and nothing ever changes it. But it's just, it's hard, you know? It's a lot harder than you think it is to get the, the timing absolute, but... Right now, WE just moving around the map. 4,000 gold lead after that Baron play. Get the tier two on bot side. They won't get anything else in the mid. They want to try maybe just control the vision around here, put themselves on the soul point in a minute 30. I feel like it's a little bit difficult for them to split into two lanes that are so close together because they could get picked apart. Wayward cannot necessarily stay on his own in the mid lane. You see Crisp is like Chris. wrapping, wrapping around, trying to get a flank onto Wayward. So Wayward has to be extremely careful pushing that wave. Yeah, they cannot with the composition that they have. It's very difficult to actually push two lanes that are super close together. Prince Ooh. is going to open the call. The curtain, Had rather. four shots, just needed one. And that is going to be the Xiao Hu dead screen now. Zero and two on this Corky. And we talked about it, just how struggling it's been for Xiao Hu so far this spring split. Normally the king of spring, like, just got that because of how dominant he was with RNG. And now WE, they're going to look to open the base. They get a tempered fate onto well, the, the virus. He's going to be forced to use his uh, chain of corruption ASAP. He's putting nothing into this... Uh, you know, Crescent Guard Zin Zhao. They'll get the inhibitor. They'll move back towards the mid lane. Xiao Hao can't really defend this on his own. And this is going to be two inhibitors broken open now at 24 minutes. There's just nothing that WE can't do. They're just so confident. Yeah, they're about 7,000 gold in deficit right here. WE are going to be going back, getting these reset, grabbing new items. There's a dragon in 10 seconds. They're going to be speed running towards this dragon fofo he's staying around onto the camera to make sure that the zinzao gets out oh well, they're gonna look for the fight right anyway gonna they're gonna everything? see if they can get him but they're not quite able to get anyone else they will get their man but that is one kill 
and a dragon to be fair for them, but they're nowhere near Sol. And you can see the ping is coming down now from the side of WE. They're saying, cool, you take your dragon, we're happy with that. We're just going to keep moving around the map, keep using as much of this power we have, this, this presence around the lane that we have to get as many structures as we need. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, our observers did Yahoo dirty there as well. Showed us how uh, he pretty much ate every ability that was thrown his way. Ended up dying, costing his team an inhibitor bot lane, a turret in the mid lane, a tier 3 turret in the mid lane as well. And WE keep pressuring around the map. Weibo, looking Zhao Hao is one of the forms of engage that they have, but it gets a little bit difficult on the listen. He found out 1D. He found Iwandi, Iwandi throws out the ultimate, the Tempered Fate is good, but not good enough to save his life. Xiaohu will be able to Valkyrie himself out of this, but now Xiaohu is on the wrong side of the map. He is going to be found out, you would imagine, pretty soon on this side of it. He should have one more move to get himself out of this. He went for the other side because he saw that Wayward was on the side with the ward, so he wanted to try and maybe see if he could land it on the Prince and get himself out, but was not to be. One for one trade, you'll take a support for a jungler any day of the week is WE, and they just come back into the game 6,000 go up, 5,000 gold up, and they're just building up more and more pressure in this game. Yeah, and it's just going to become more and more difficult for Weibo Gaming to walk inside their jungle. They don't necessarily have uh, a guaranteed player that can face check into the jungle, that is tanky enough to face check anyone from the side of WE just for a little bit of vision control. You see, I wonder he's going to get caught here by Zhao Hao, and he is going to get uh, Wayward kicked into the fight, but a very nice. Buffer on the W right there will get Wayward out. However, Xiao Hao is going to have to pay with his life for getting that kick onto the Tristana. He tries to get the Q onto Prince to try and get out, but I don't know. Even if he got that, I don't, I don't think he was getting anywhere. No, I think it was a fun idea, but idea nonetheless. As we come back into and live. You have to be creative if you play Listen. Absolutely, it's where literally one of the most uh, creative uh, plays or players came from. You know, Insec, of course, getting a name, a, a, a move name after him. But uh, now, with two minutes still left in the bottom inhibitor, you can see Prince with a full crit build here, the traditional Jin build, if you will, starting to tick away at this mid lane inhibitor. I feel like if you get this now as the side of WE, you're going to be able to turn for that Baron in 30 seconds. No real questions asked. Still have ZDZ pushing in that bot side to deal with these super minions to give them time without having super minions burning into the base. But I mean, he, he's going to have to use Destiny Gate to get back into the fight. I mean, you're going to have to fight at some point. There is going to be Baron coming up pretty soon for WE. And WE is definitely going to want to take that one. However, Weibo Gaming right now is trying to trade some side lane pressure for an inhibitor. You've got two inhibitors bleeding, two lanes, sorry, bleeding right now for Weibo Gaming. And I don't think I have ever seen ZDZ in a singular fight, apart from the one where he TP'd in the middle of literally everyone and ended up giving up his life for this. Now, I feel like Weibo Gaming are going to need to get a pretty good pick right here. Maybe look for Wayward, maybe look for Prince. Here we go. Chris is going to have to get a pretty good engage right here, but ZDZ is still on the bot side of the map. He's not looking like he's running anytime soon, but Fofo has teleport. Fofo does have teleport, but I will say Fofo does not win the 1v1 here against uh, ZDZ. Fofo kind of needs to be with his team to get the max value out of it, but now they've maybe changed their minds about how they want to try and fight this. Just moving around the map. Wait, but not out of this one just yet. It is WE's game to win. They've actually lost themselves about 2,000 gold since we talked about it. It was 5,000, now it's 3,000. They're slowly kind of seeing that the uh, the super minions in the bot side just not really doing what they needed to do. Super minions now will be crashing in towards the mid lane. And now they might start to try and burn onto this Baron. It's going to be so difficult. you got three items onto your Varus just finished up. He's nowhere near this fight. I think this Baron's just dead. Yeah, absolutely. Now, there were two problems that WE run into. One is that you don't have your Karma there, so your Zinzao is not going to be as Whoa, durable Xiao in that team fight. Oh my gosh, Yahoo! Xiaohu goes in and uh, immediately has to go out. I don't know where they're looking for this fight right now. Xiaohu gets jumped uh -oh. on by Wayward. They're actually Please. lights just digging in in front of him, so Xiaohu can't die. ZDZ goes golden as Fofo uses his own little stasis there. ZDZ will get stunned up, will be almost certainly taken out there, but no, he flashes away at the last second. Had the barrier as well to keep him alive. Look at this Oof. damage! The bounce 
bouncing grenade almost, but enough from that. Bofo flashes forward, lands the Q, and now you can start to see WE start to feel confident. These health bars are so low. An auto attack is good, and that means you're a 3v5 for the rest of this potential siege, and this could be the game. There is quite a bit of wave clear onto Jahu Skorki, but I'm not sure they can actually play underneath the tower. Three very squishy members, the entire of WE is knocking on your door. They're knocking on your door and they are breaking it down. Your tur turrets are no longer, your health bars will be next. You can see Chris trying his hardest. Shao who just doesn't do any damage or any significant damage in this fight. And that's gonna be WE 1-0 up over Weibo. And once they found an inch, they took a mile. Very well played again from WE. Played through their strong lane, played through their top side, and Wayward with yet another pick. He brings out the Tristana into.